lesson is organized in two parts. The first one describes the use of a design-oriented approach to participatory video process and collaborative storytelling practices in order to provide further expressive tools to the members of marginalized communities, fostering dialogues among peers. The second part focuses on the communicative process and the role of socialization in developing multi-channel communication strategies able to foster audience engagement, activate collaboration among peers and social innovation. So, what is this lesson all about? Storytelling, of course, a social and cultural activity based on the shaping and sharing of stories a set of techniques and tools that use the narrative elements in different contexts of application, and participatory video. But what is participatory video? What does participatory video actually mean? The term participatory video refers to a wide range of practices and experiences, and it can be considered as a relatively new field for academic research since it has been applied mainly outside the academic context. Trying to encompass a common definition shared among practitioners, it is possible to say that on the one hand, participatory video can be considered as a means for the creative expression of groups and communities, giving them the full control about what is communicated and how, making participants feel committed and able to narrate and express themselves. On the other hand, participatory video processes involve people who are non-experts in the process of making an audiovisual product. People who do not have any previous training or education in video production or video editing. As defined by Johansson, they are a group of grassroots people moving forward in iterative cycles of shooting, reviewing and become aware about personal and community needs. Since participatory video is a practice-based process that requires the presence of a mediator, what can design do? Design can contribute to participatory video culture, linking together the processes and the outputs, providing tools coming from co-design practices and visual and representational skills. In this way, it will be possible to improve the perceived quality of the artifacts collaboratively produced and also the creative and expressive skills of the participants. In order to clarify what can be the role of design, it is possible to declare that a design-oriented approach to participatory video reclaims that designers act as mediators. In this sense, the role of the designer becomes of central importance in dealing with problems related to comprehension, access to information and experiences. The designer provides languages and tools, enables the dialogue among stakeholders having different backgrounds, expectations and speaking different languages. Therefore, we developed an approach proposing the use of participatory video process and collaborative storytelling tools and practices in order to foster social innovation and conversational processes. Now, I want to give you some practical information about the process. It is possible to recognize three macro actions in which the design-oriented approach to participatory video is articulated. The first one is literacy. The aim is to provide knowledge and tools to non-experts, merging different languages, media and technologies in order to improve their technical and soft skills. Even though the visual artifacts can be considered an affordable and common communication language, an introduction to audiovisual language, co-design of ad hoc tools and production of digital videos is necessary. The second action is related to the collaborative script writing and definition of the format, in order to go on with the production of audiovisual contents that may be serial according to the needs of people involved and the project aim. The format provides to the community involved guidelines and tools for developing further the project and make the process sustainable. The set of tools was developed in order to support the character's creation, the development of the narrative structure and the guidelines for the audiovisual production. 
Last but not least, the third macro action is socialization. Socializing the final results is part of the overall participatory process. When the integration of participatory video experience is led into wider social context and process and results are disseminated, we are moving to the communication field. In order to deepen the explanation of the communicative process, it is possible to highlight how socialization can be read as a strategy to strengthen relations established in a local dimension. The evolution of social interconnection through digital technologies has emerged in the contemporary mediascape. We observe the rising of distribution of messages across several media in communication process, multi-channel structures in which the stories are spread over different media in order to reach several audiences. Indeed, multi-channel structures have become increasingly important and completely changed the role of the audience. Therefore, storytelling may be integrated into wider communication system so that all the stakeholders may be immersed in it and take part in the creation and meaning-making processes. This entails an integration of the contribution of communication design within communities, following two main phases. Firstly, the development of multi-channel communicative strategies, spreading the process and the outputs among the project recipient, partners and local stakeholders. So, the first action is the development of multi-channel structures. Multi-channel structures are able to foster the sharing of meaning-making processes among peers, shaping society and influencing media habits through storytelling, story listening and engagement. Presently, people live in a highly mediated context in which they are surrounded by imaginary worlds where they can experience a wide variety of products and activities through multiple media windows. Designers can make use of story worlds not only to envision possible future realities, but also to engage citizens as members of the audience in order to unlock people's potential. Specifically, designers can develop multi-channel communication projects concerned with the use of stories that are spread through different channels. The second phase is about sharing the overall experience with other communities, producing further content aimed at supporting social dialogue and stimulating empathy among different social groups involved. In terms of activity, that means using storytelling practice on social media as communication strategy for spreading the contents. Narrative as a form of knowledge and communication has a long history. Moreover, social media and social networks have probably facilitated the development of new forms of storytelling, supported by media convergence. What social media platforms can add to the practice of storytelling is that stories can be navigated by users and people can be easily engaged through mobile storytelling, thanks to the widespread use of portable devices and the audience's familiarity with the social media mechanism. In conclusion, a design-oriented approach to participatory video process and collaborative storytelling may contribute towards the enrichment of members of marginalized communities, giving them instruments for the self-expression and the communication of ideas.